Wagala military airstrip remains a constant reminder to the Digodia clan of the brutality that was rained on them for three days from the wee hours of the 10th of February, 1984. The question that still prevails 27 years later is why. But there was one thing that was not in doubt. The attackers were men in uniform, drawn from the army, the General Service Unit, GSU, and regular police. The attackers did not try to conceal this fact or the fact that their targets were members of the Digodia clan. So, for all intents and purposes, this was a government operation. But why would a government attack its own citizens so brutally? And who in President Daniel Arab Moy's government ordered these attacks? Perhaps the most incriminating links between the government and the Wagala massacre is the records from the visitor's book at the Wajir District Officer's Office. The records show that members of the National Security and Intelligence Committee held a meeting there on the 8th of February, 1984. Citizen TV managed to obtain a copy of these records which listed the names of all the government officials who attended the meeting. Mr. Abdirashid Salat, who was a clerical officer at the district commissioner's office in Wajir at that time, recalls vividly. This list is actually um, a record of what I saw that time at the DC's office for years. This information was extracted from the visitor spoke. So it clearly shows that all these names, somebody will not just sit somewhere and write them down. The addresses are indicated, right? Their positions are indicated. Less than 48 hours later, the Wagala massacre occurred. Citizen TV sought to track down some of the prominent individuals whose names appear on the list to establish what exactly transpired at the meeting. Interestingly, while some of those on the list recalled having attended the meeting, others denied it ever took place. Others refused to speak on camera, whilst others refused to speak at all. Joseph Kaguthi was listed as a senior administrative secretary in the office of the president's administration who attended the meeting. He later rose to the rank of provincial commissioner. Kaguthi declined to appear on camera and remained non-committal over whether or not he was in attendance. And I quote, I was a junior officer working under the permanent secretary, James Matenge. As an assistant, I should not comment separately and I'm not entitled to reveal government business." End of quote. James Matenge, who was the permanent secretary in the office of the president in charge of internal security, also declined to be interviewed on the grounds that he was bound to silence by the Official Secrets Act, which prevents him from talking about his work in government without clearance from the head of civil service. We got a similar response from retired General J.R. Kibwana, who was a brigadier at that time and later rose to become the Chief of General Staff of the Kenyan Armed Forces. And I quote, when I retired from the military, I signed the oath of secrecy, which forbids me from talking about anything in my role in the military without permission from the superiors." End of quote. John Gituma, who was the permanent secretary in the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, was not available for comments. Ben Sankaria, who was then the Provincial Commissioner of Northeastern Province, could also not be reached. We were told that he does not speak to the press. But two of those on the list, Bethwell Kiplagat, who was a permanent secretary in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and David Miraria, who was a permanent secretary in the Ministry of Home Affairs, agreed to speak to us. 
I started off by asking them whether the meeting at the Wajir DC's office on the 8th of February 1984 ever took place. We definitely went on a familiarizer trip. And when you arrive in any office, you sign. So if I sign, I have signed. I'm not denying that. But to say that we sat down and planned an operation, even that is not legal because this is done by the district, by the province, but not done at the national level. But according to Miraria, there was no such meeting. I really want to say categorically that there was no meeting of any civil servants from Nairobi in Wajir two days or any days before the Wagala massacre. I would like somebody to produce the DC's visitor's book with my handwritten name and signature on whatever day they are talking about because it is a complete falsehood. The contradiction between Kiplagat and Miraria over whether the meeting ever took place begs many questions. So if I sign, I have signed. I'm not denying that. But to say that we sat down and planned an operation. I would like somebody to produce the DC's visitor's book with my handwritten name and signature on whatever day they are talking about because it is a complete falsehood. Kenya's secret history continues tomorrow. Belinda Obura for Citizen TV.